is a demonstration of the Linux CMC pull request number 2706 to extend M6E to allow return to the original position. In general, this is a modification of the MVC code provided for the QP based interfaces, and the name of this code snippet is QP auto code tools.mvc. How to install this code is documented under the QP Dragon interface. How to set it up is documented in the proposed code itself. This code is intended for people with non-repeatable tool holders who have one, a tool probe, and two, a tool setter probe. The tool probe measures the height of the workpiece at the beginning of your run. The tool setter measures actual displacement of each tool after each tool change. Using these procedures allows for a semi-automated process of a decode script that includes tool changes. The semi part is because a person has to do the actual tool swap, something they wouldn't have to do if they have a fully automatic tool change. But it's automated because once that's done, measuring the tool offset is handled automatically by probing the tool setter, as opposed to a fully manual process where you then have to move that tool over to a measuring device and set your offsets yourself. The version of QT Auto Pro Tool.mvc prior to this pull request leaves the tool head in a point that bears no relationship to where the tool head was when the M6 tool change command was issued, which means the previous code out of the box could not be moved automatically without forcing the script calling it to determine the safe position and move the tool head in a safe manner back to that location after a tool change. This pull request addresses that issue by making the QP Auto Pro Tool MVC move the tool back to the position it was at prior to issuing the tool change request. First, in this video, I'm going to explain the setup I use with Linux CMC's QP Dragon interface, which enables me to employ this modified code. I'm explaining this in detail in the hope that the code will be adopted and that anyone in the future can reference this setup video. There are a number of steps that you have to follow in order to ensure that all the internal variables needed for this tool change to work repeatedly during a quick run are properly set, hence the setup part of this video. So here is that initial setup part. I start the client using the debug flag, but this is not strictly necessary. Note that this client is QP Dragon, not QP Dragon HD. It should work the same, but some of the probing schemes may be arranged differently. First, make sure the tool probe is physically loaded into your tool head. Also, and very important, ensure that the tool probe entry in your tool table has a zero offset for the Z offset. This is done because we're going to use this tool to probe to find the top of your workpiece. In actual program one, in an actual program run, you want to then position the tool head to the point in space where your decode program begins. For example, if you designed your decode to start from a point 10 millimeters above a point which CAD program references as 000, say somewhere in the center of this box, then you would first determine the 000 point in the center of the physical stock you're preparing to cut using the tool probe screens of the tool probe and set whatever frame of reference G54, G55, etc. to 000 at that point. Then you'd move the tool head to wherever your actual starting position is. In my example, I'm going to set it to 10 millimeters above the workpiece point. I will flag that point in this video as the starting point. The problem with a non-zero Z offset in the tool probe's table entry is that when the tool setter measures the first tool's length, it will do a subtraction and add the offset of the tool probe itself to the new tool, and as a result, your tool head will not arrive back at the correct spot. So the second step after setting up the tool probe, the tool table, is of course to home your machine. Note in this video that the homing position is off screen from the machine camera view. The 
third step is to use M61 and Q is whatever number your tool stub is set to to tell Linux CMC that you have this tool loaded. You do not want to use a tool change command at this point because that would call the probe command G38.x and you don't want to do this because you don't want to apply any offset yet. You need to get to a parameters set which is zero offset initially. You want to first measure the tool setter's height with a zero offset in order to store that height as an internal parameter which the software uses to calculate each subsequent tool change offset. In my case, that tool is set to 1, and you can verify that it is loaded in this interface because it highlights it in blue. Now we set it to a safe travel height. And now we do the fourth set, which is fourth step, which is to probe the tool setter. I'm going to move it to the position of my tool setter in my machine. I'm using G-code commands that you can use if you're arguing with the tool. The fifth step is to begin using the probe tool. To do that, you switch to the probe tab in Linux in QP Dragon. And then you have to use the probe type button in order to advance to the subscreen that's entitled the tool probe. Now this has all of your parameters, but we really only need to set uh, two of these, the probe height and the block height. The probe height is what we're going to set now that we positioned over top of the tool setter, and that is done using this button here. So when you click this, you will see it operate on the screen. And if you watch carefully, it's going to change this probe height to ever so slightly because I don't have a repeatable tool ball here. So now it's the sixth step. We're back up to a safe travel height. And then you would jog or position yourself to your work, work stock. Uh, in practice, you're probably going to be jogging and using the tool probe to do this in for this video, I'm just going to go to a pre-established spot that I've set up with a little X mark. At the end of your XY positioning, using the tool probe or however your workflow is, you want to make sure you come back to this tool probe setting and probe the work height. That will set the block height correctly. Now you want to set your positioning for your 000 point. I'm going to simulate that right at the X spot. So I'm going to go up 0.1 millimeter and then down 10 millimeters. That's because when it finished the probe, it raised the tool head by this G parameter here. So I'm just going to clear it so I don't trip my probe again. And right above the little X. And now I'm going to set, you can see here, my Z is the result of a bunch of previous offsets. I'm now going to use the G10 or 20 G1 to set this point to uh, 0, 0, 0. And now we have a 0, 0, 0 right at that little X point. So this is the starting point I promised to flag earlier. And the only thing to do here now is to issue the tool change command. I'm going to change the tool to. The software moves it to the safe position, which is the standard behavior in the M6 command. I'm going to swap out. And we're just finger tightening because we're not going to spin any tools. And this will make things go faster. I'm going to put a very short tool in. Will result in a negative offset and cause it to cause the tool head to have to lower much lower in order to get back to the same X spot where it was when we issued the M6 command. So far, we're still executing what is the standard code. That's the end of the standard code there, and here's where the new code kicks in. 
lands right back where it started. I'm now going to demonstrate doing that again by jogging to another position just to demonstrate that the software repeats adequately. You could imagine a situation where it doesn't actually, where it sets something wrong in between and doesn't, doesn't become repeatable over, over this course of the same script. So to do that, I'm simply going to uh, raise ourselves up a bit. over to another X that I've set up so we can visually see if it's going to go back to the spot. And now we'll issue the tool change command. We'll switch to a very different tool, the tool free. Alright, so again, I hope that this uh, demonstration shows how it can be used um, and that subsequent iterations of the tool change behave as desired, each one returning the tool head to a place or point where the G code is being run either manually or the script that issued the tool change command. Hope this was helpful and uh, all the best to everyone.